another week and another movie wrap up. This is Steve's movie wrap up. Hello, let's get on and let's review some of the movies that I've watched this week. You're watching Steve's movie wrap up episode 25. The first movie we'll be reviewing in this episode is Back to Black. So Back to Black, I gave two stars over on Letterboxd. So Back to Black is an interesting biopic. Now, while I'm aware of how Amy Winehouse died back in 2011, and it is a tragedy uh, that she died, uh, like many famous singers or celebrities, I will admit that I do like a bit of Amy Winehouse. Personal favourites of mine have got to be uh, Valerie and Back to Black. Uh, there's something rather distinctive about Amy's voice that is always heard within her music, but that's just my opinion of her songs. That being said, though, it's interesting because there's a, a quote within this movie which is said through the voice of Amy's voice. Uh, I want to be remembered through my voice. Now... Still to this day, she is remembered through her singing career, no matter what radio station uh, you put on, whether it's in the UK or elsewhere around the world, you'll no doubt hear a song from Amy Winehouse. But for me, though, this film, despite delving into her music career and her discography, um, but it just felt like the message it was trying to send out in this uh, is... This is how Amy Winehouse will always be remembered. She used to drink and take drugs. Now, while that is sadly the case, she did take drugs and she used to have uh, an alcohol addiction. And while this film does slightly delve into the fact that she did go to rehab, hence the song Rehab, uh, but it is just uh, seemed like... That was the message this movie was giving out, was that all Amy Winehouse used to do was drink and smoke drugs every day, which I think is a discredit to the late singer herself. Uh, I know that she died in 2011, nearly 13 years ago now she died, but I feel like this biopic should have really celebrated her life in a more positive way, rather than showing the negative side of it, or at least tonally dial it down a little bit and show more of the positives uh, that we that uh, that we saw at the beginning of the film. It does delve into her relationship with Blake as well, and the fact that they got married, um, and also shows how much of a close bonds she had with her nan who died from cancer. I did think though, despite the negatives I have for this movie, that I must take my hat, hat off to the lead actress that is uh, Marissa Abella who portrayed Amy Winehouse. I thought she did a great portrayal of the late singer and not only this but she even sang Amy's songs using her own voice but using it the same way how Amy herself would have sang those songs uh, when she first sang them. I, I did uh, also think that the other supporting actors in this movie did a great job in the roles that they were given as well. Founders Day. Founders Day I gave two and a half stars over on Letterboxd. So Founders Day was released in US theatres earlier this year and at the time I was hearing very mixed reviews about this movie. Some people enjoyed it while others didn't. Sadly here in the UK we didn't get a theatrical release for this movie. Founders Day came out on digital platforms earlier this week therefore I had to rent this one via Amazon which I did for £3.49. Now was it worth the time and the money that I paid for to watch this some may argue yes and others may argue no because for me uh, the movie wasn't too bad. Yes, it did have its gory moments which I did enjoy. There was a couple of scenes in this which I would argue are in some ways quite campy to watch but at the same time funny. Um, uh, funny. There's one death that takes place in a theatre and while the kill is happening you can see this cartoon being played on the big screen in the background in which they're singing 
Let's all go to the lobby, you know. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. You know, yeah. Um, anyway, so, uh, which I did, by the way, think uh, was funny and campy at the same time. I don't know as to whether I was surprised by the reveal of the killer at the end uh, or not. Part of me did think to myself, I should be surprised because I wasn't expecting it to be the person who it was revealed to be. I'm not going to reveal who it was in case of spoilers and people want to watch this movie based on my review. But then the other part of me did think uh, to myself, the reveal in a way did kind of make sense to be honest. Um, I did enjoy the soundtrack on this. I thought the soundtrack was pretty cool and... While I didn't know any of the songs from any of the artists from this movie, and I'll be surprised if there's artists in this movie's soundtrack who I happen to know musically, but I still thought uh, the music they used for this was rather cool. The acting didn't seem to be too bad, in my opinion. I feel as though the characters in this were made out to be kind of unlikable for the sake of that their character was going to be killed off at some point uh, in the movie anyways. But the good thing um, is though the movie isn't kind of making out that it's a low budget horror movie. I do feel like though this movie was deemed to be a bit messy in places. Yeah the plot seemed to be a little bit straightforward and I do think at times it was trying its very hardest to be a bit like the Scream franchise but I don't think it really did work to be honest so the one hour 45 minutes that you're watching this movie it does seem to be rather messy and you can get yourself lost within the movie at times and have no idea as to what's going on. That also being said, you don't know which character in the movie um, is the main character of the film. And I think it does become a lot more clearer towards the final act of the movie who the main character of the film was, which is unfortunate uh, because if I knew at the very beginning which um, character it was we was mostly following throughout the movie then I think I would have rooted more for them uh, when it came towards the final act like you want that character to survive until the credits of the movie rolled um, so for me Founders Day is a rather mixed bag really there's elements of this movie that I did enjoy and there's elements that I didn't so much enjoy which is a shame as this was a movie that I've been wanting to check out for a while and while I am glad that I have now watched um, the movie for myself and gave my opinions on the film, I do feel somewhat disappointed that I didn't enjoy this as much as I would have loved to. As to me renting this movie though, I would say for what it was worth for the rental price though, because like I... Um, um, like, like I say, I, I did somewhat enjoy this more, um, more, uh, I did enjoy the movie though, and did laugh at a couple of, uh, scenes. Is this a movie that I would happily rewatch again or purchase to buy and keep on digital? I don't think it will be sadly, because it's just one of those films that I wanted to check out. I've seen it the once and don't think it's a rewatch worthy. I still appreciate the movie for what it was trying to do and trying to achieve here though. So Founders Day is available to buy and rent on digital platforms in the UK for those who are wanting to check the movie out for themselves. The idea of you. The idea of you I gave three stars over on Letterboxd. So I'm going to be honest here. I have only seen Anne Hathaway in three films in her filmography and they are Interstellar, uh, The Dark Knight Rises and Hustle which came out in 2019 and stars Rebel Wilson as well. Uh, now this is the fourth film I have seen uh, Anne Hathaway um, act in and I must say that I believe that she made the character in this movie rather believable in the fact that she was in love and in this relationship um, which some may deem um, as controversial as she 
entered a relationship with a singer from a boy band who is the age of 24 years old, while her character herself is a single mum uh, at the age of 40. Some may see that age gap as controversial, but as I say to that, um, each to their own. If it's not hurting anyone, then just let it be what it wants to be. Uh, I'm not really a huge uh, fan of these fan fiction romance kind of movies. I believe that they should stay in a fanfic world, in my opinion, rather than it being shown on screen. Now, while that's kind of controversial for me to say because a lot of people have been giving this a lot of praise, I will say that I did have a somewhat enjoyable time with this movie. The plot is basically a generic kind of plot. As I mentioned earlier in the review, uh, you have a 40-year-old single mum who happens to end up um, being in the arms of a 24-year-old uh, lead singer from a boy band, and they begin dating and seeing one another. Uh, are there sex scenes in this? Yes. Are the sex scenes steamy? Yes. Um, were the sex scenes a good idea to watch at 8 a.m. in the morning at the time of watching the film? It was probably way too early to watch uh, those sex scenes that we got given um, in this movie. But still, though, Anne Hathaway and Nicholas uh, uh, Gazzatine uh, were great in their roles. Uh, they made the chemistry between the two characters rather believable. And I will say this as well. Uh, the music soundtrack in this is brilliantly brilliantly put together as well. I think this is one of the uh, those movies that I would say people should uh, check out. It's available uh, to stream on Amazon Prime Video. And maybe, just maybe, check this one um, out straight off the back of coming back from your local theatres or cinemas around the world after watching Challengers, a movie which I reckon I'll get around to watching at some point later in the year. Um, maybe there could be some similarities between the two movies. Who knows? Fast Charlie. Fast Charlie I gave uh, two and a half stars over on Letterboxd. Now, what I love about this movie is the fact that it doesn't really outstay its welcome with the running time, only coming in at 90 minutes, so basically 1 hour and 30 minutes. And like the movie itself, I'm going to try and keep this review of Fast Charlie short and sweet and make sure the review doesn't outstay its welcome. I thought Piers Brosnan, uh, the lead actor in this movie, did a great job as the role of Charlie. However, though, something bugged me about his performance. What was with this weird southern accent halfway through uh, the movie? It did get a tad annoying, but not for me to complain about too much, though. I thought the pacing throughout the film was fine and, again, as mentioned, didn't outstay its welcome too much neither. And I thought the dialogue was pretty good and the action scenes, the action that we saw was rather decent as well. I will say, though, that at times the plot was rather thin and also at times the movie could be deemed a little predictable. But for me, though, that's the only negatives that I have about this movie. So if you're wondering whether to check out Fast Charlie, then I would recommend you do, particularly if you're a fan of Piers Brosnan. And you can watch the movie Fast Charlie now, as it is streaming over on Amazon Prime Video. The Land of Bad. Land of Bad. I gave two and a half stars over on Letterboxd. Now, while you may see the title of this film and think, well, if the title of the film is called Land of Bad, then the film must be terrible. Believe me, it actually isn't a bad film. I mean, yes, it probably has the worst movie title going ever since the movie Plane came out. I still can't get over uh, that as a movie title, by the way. But the film isn't too bad at all. I'd say it's a pretty decent, if not solid, war film, as that's what it is trying to be. Uh, the movie does have some recognisable names to go with it, as Liam Hemsworth, Russell Crowe and Luke Hemsworth all star in this movie. I'd say that the pacing is okay. The action in this is actually rather decent for a film. 
that I wouldn't tend to watch. And some of the cinematography in this is actually quite gorgeous. First of all, I have I have a few questions about this movie. Why did Amazon opt uh, this to be put on streaming first and not release this theatrically? And secondly, because of some of the gorgeous cinematography we got within this movie, why did I opt to watch this movie on a tablet rather uh, than putting this movie on a slightly bigger screen in the regards of my 4K TV? I think uh, the movie probably would have worked better at that. Um... But that aside though, I know you're probably thinking, why have I given this a two and a half star rating when I'm giving this movie such high praise? I don't know. I did feel at times like some of the stuff we do see in this movie uh, has been done a million times before in other war films or in other action films. And I was wanting something different or looking to see something different or original done in the movie something in which this sadly failed to do so therefore i think that goes uh, that that gives me the reason to only give the rating uh, that i did uh, but if you are wanting to check out the land of bad for yourself then you can do as it is now streaming over on Amazon Prime Video. Unfrosted. Unfrosted, I gave one and a half star over on Netflix. Now, actually, this is the second of the brand new movies that's come out this past week, actually. Obviously, the first being The Idea of You, and now we've moved over to Unfrosted, which came out uh, on Friday this week. Now, I gave this one and a half star over on Netflix. Um, this movie had such a stat cast with Jerry Seinfeld directing and starring in the movie alongside Hugh Grant, Amy Schumer, um, uh, Maria Bakalova, Melissa McCarthy and yet this one kind of tanked. Now don't get me wrong, um, we here in the UK do have Pop-Tarts and despite the cost of how much a packet does cost here in the UK, it's not something that I would eat every day for breakfast probably too sugary for my liking as well but that being said though did i enjoy this movie well not really the jokes didn't really land with me at all the music however though was pretty decent uh, and that i really enjoyed especially the original song which was sang by megan trainer and jimmy Fall uh, fallon um um which is called Sweet uh, Morning Heat. That song is such a bop, by the way, that I've been listening to that on repeat on Spotify Music over the last couple of weeks. But apart from that, though, the movie is pretty bad, to be honest. Yeah, it's an okay movie. If you want to dive into the history of the Pop-Tart, or um, if you want to know how it all began and how it all started and yeah sure this is probably a, a great family friendly movie uh to put it uh to put on in front of your child uh or children although i could probably recommend other movies for your child uh to watch other than this so that's far better but apart from um apart from this though that's all i uh, really can add to the movie review um you had hugh grant dressed as pretty much tony the tiger from frosties saying their rights not the original not the normal slogan of their greats um so there's that as well anyways for those who do want to give this movie a watch it's available to watch now over on netflix globally and yes by the way that was my best impression of tony the tiger that you guys will get the archies and the final movie that i've watched this week is the archies uh, over on netflix which i gave one and a half star now while this isn't the best netflix movie out there just like Unfrosted. Um, and while this is set in the Riverdale universe, and while the children can't act, even the narration just seems to be rather off here, but there is some decent parts of this movie that I did actually enjoy. 
the fact that this movie was nearly two and a half hours long was just a little bit too much at times. Um, did feel like it was dragging on forever, but I will say though that I did love the dance scenes. I thought it was choreographed really well in each scene uh, that there was songs. And speaking of songs, actually, I did somewhat enjoy the songs, although this was technically a musical when you think about it and when you watch this for yourself but this one does something different they sing songs in indian which is where this movie is set by the way uh but they have english subtitles on the bottom of the screen which i did think is different i don't think i have ever seen a musical made from another country where they sang the songs in their own language and had the english subtitles on the bottom of the screen so for me anyways it was something different uh is this a movie that i'll happily go back and watch well Likely not, but I am glad to have watched it. Uh, now, uh, particularly as it's been on my watch list for quite some time uh, uh, now, and it's also been on Netflix for quite some time. But that being said, though, I did say at the start of this review that this is set within the universe of the TV show that is Riverdale. Now, while that show has actually ended, uh, now that does give me thought to go and watch the rest of the show because I have tried to watch it before and only managed to get to around season three or season four of the show before I stopped watching. I do know that later seasons of the show became more wacky and bizarre um, which kind of makes me want to jump back into the Riverdale universe. Anyway, the Archies, if you do want to check it out for yourself, is available to stream uh, now over on Netflix. And that is all for this week's episode of the Movie Wrap-Up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. What's been your favourite movie that you've been watching this past week? Whether it's old, new, on streaming service or in cinemas or even a rewatch. Maybe it could have been a, sh uh, a movie that you guys have uh, seen many a time before, even when you were a child. Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like what you see and you want to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button to become a Stevo. Your next YouTube video will be out uh, tomorrow, Monday the 6th of May 2024 at 4pm UK time, which is my next episode of the weekly vlog. But until then though, it's goodbye, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys again in my next YouTube video.